Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got a quick one today because I picked up this little USB stick the other day that I thought was of interest. It's nothing spectacular, it's your typical USB 3 memory stick. I believe this one stores 128 gigabytes, not all that expensive. But what's neat about this is that if you flip it around here, you go to a USB Type-C connector. So this could be a super fast way to transfer files from your phone to the computer and back again. And we're going to do a quick look at this and see how fast it is and how it works on Android and Windows in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little stick is all about. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with this is plug it into my PC here and run a quick speed test on it. Uh, this is already formatted, so it will mount itself on your computer. Let's take a look now at the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. This is something we measure how fast a drive can be read or written to. And I'm just going to go here and select the USB drive, which is drive E, the one we just inserted. And I'm going to go to Start, and we'll see what the speeds are. So it looks like we're writing to it at about 68 megabytes per second or so, which actually isn't bad for a low-cost USB stick. Uh, as expected, the reads are always going to do a little better than the writes. Uh, so you can see there it is reading at about 145 megabytes per second. Pretty darn good. Now what I'd like to do is let this test run a little bit. And the reason is, is that these little memory sticks often have memory caches built in to speed up the write process. And what's nice about this test is that it often doesn't give enough time for the drive to catch up writing to the flash memory before it starts writing again. So as you can see here, we're just slightly uh, below the 68 megabytes we had at the outset here, now writing at about 65 or so. But overall, this is a pretty good performing little USB stick from a read and write perspective. And now what I want to do is copy a file over to it and run that file to my smartphone to see how fast we can make that happen. All right, so we're going to copy a video file now from my desktop to the memory stick here, just to show you kind of a real world file copy. And what will happen here is it will go up to about the speed we saw before on the speed test, but you will see it kind of drop off at some point. This file is just under two gigabytes in size. And what's interesting is that uh, sometimes you'll see that cache issue happen on a speed test, and other times you'll see it happen in the real world, like right now. So you can see we were writing at 60-something megabytes per second for a good length of time, and then it dropped off to about 32 or 33 or so. And these drives really are not replacements for a solid-state external hard drive. They're good for copying files back and forth like this. So I wouldn't use this in a environment where you're booting an operating system or something that requires steady performance. But this is still pretty quick, I think, for a low-cost USB stick, especially if you're moving large media files around. Now, before we uh, pop this out and go to my phone, I noticed that SanDisk actually put an APK file uh, right here in the root directory of the USB stick. This is their Memory Zone app. And I'll show you this app in a few minutes when we boot up the phone. Uh, you can get that app, though, on the Google Play Store, and I would recommend you get it from there. And the reason is, is that if you install the app through the stick, you're going to have to turn off some of the security controls on your phone to get it installed. And I think it's safer to install the version from the Google Play Store. And it's kind of odd that they put an APK file on here and provided a PDF to show you how to disable those security controls as well. Uh, for people that are real tech savvy, this isn't a big deal, but I do think this creates some security issues on phones for casual users that I would not recommend they follow. So get it from the Google Play Store. It's the same app. And let's get my phone going now and see if that video file transferred correctly. All right, so we got our Google Pixel 4a phone out here. And full disclosure, uh, Google sent this to the channel free of charge to review a little while back. Now, this has a USB-C port here at the bottom. I flipped the stick around to uh, expose its USB-C plug. We're going to pop it right into the bottom of the phone here. And I'm going to go over to the Files app that's built into my phone. And you'll see here, uh, once I get rid of all this stuff, um, we, you'll see here the uh, storage device here showing up. The SanDisk 3.2 Gen 1 is what it says. I'm going to tap on that. And right here is the video file that we loaded up on there a little bit earlier. And if I tap on that, as you can see here, it is playing back. 
off the memory stick through the USB-C port. So we were able to successfully copy a file from the computer with the USB-A to the USB stick here and then flip it around and plug it into a phone and play that file back. Pretty cool stuff. I do want to show you though that memory zone application before we close out. So let's boot that up and have a look. All right, so here is the memory zone app. And again, I recommend installing this through the Play Store and not from the file that's on the stick. It's the same app. Now, when I plug my uh, stick into the phone, it's going to ask now if I want to open the memory zone app. And I have the option to have it always open the app when I install it. But this time we're just gonna have it do it, but not in the future, just so I have some choices to how I want that to go. And as you can see here now, it's seeing two storage locations on here. Uh, you can copy files back and forth through the app, so it's a little bit easier maybe to do that. And I can start off with a file on the phone, for example, maybe one of my download folders here, and then I can have it copy to the stick, copy the items there, and you can see now it's going to copy a few things that I had in my downloads folder on the phone to the stick. Uh, so that's pretty helpful there. I'm just going to cancel that because one of those files was rather large. Um, you have the ability here to browse the media that's on the phone. So I could copy some of my pictures and videos off the phone over to the stick. Again, you can do this on other apps as well, but it might be easier through their app. Uh, you can also browse through files on your phone like we did a second ago or on the stick uh, as well. And then they have some stuff in here that might be really useful. They have a backup feature where you could go through and back up your photos, music, videos, documents, and contacts to the stick. And you can do that on a scheduled basis or on a one-time basis here. So if I can uh, select here, maybe I'll do just um, documents and contacts just to be quick here. And I'll have to give it access to that. And I'll tell it to back up to the stick here and it's going to do a quick backup of all of my contacts and uh, some of those other things that I specified. And this could be a pretty quick and easy way to get a backup going. And of course, these phones typically back up to the Google Cloud, but if you want to be super safe, you can plug the stick in and just back up to it through the app here and have it do that for you. So that's pretty useful there. Uh, we'll back out of this real quick and it's given us a whole little file browse here of what was backed up. You can do your file restoration from here as well. Uh, they have another thing here where you can manage the apps that are installed on your phone, which is maybe useful if you want another way to do that. Uh, one thing though that was crashing for us is that if you go over here to delete junk files, uh, it was actually crashing when I was running it earlier, but now it appears to be working. Uh, what it's going to do is go through the phone and try to find things that it can clear out to give you a little bit more onboard space. So a couple of little useful utilities here built in, but again, I would suggest you install this through the Play Store and not through the file that is on the stick. So that's going to do it for this look at the SanDisk Ultra Dual Drive. Pretty flexible little device that gives you both USB-C and USB-A connectors on the same memory stick. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.